Hello? My children, I'm back with another video with some fucking tunes as well, because we're jazzing out. And we're going to be talking about lurkers today. And I got this shit loaded up in the unit tester here. And I'm basically going to talk about how the fuck do we use ghosts to kill lurkers, okay? So I need this raven because I, I can't see this shit otherwise. So let's just say... Let's just burrow this here. Oh, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so let's say... This, this is scenario number one. Okay. Scenario number, we're going to go through a couple scenarios with the ghost. This is scenario number one, okay? So here we have our, our standard Mexican standoff, right? If we try to snipe all the lurkers, it kind of goes to shit, right? This is kind of the problem people have, right? But what you can actually do is... You wanna if you actually click on the lurkers in the game, you can actually see which one where the range is, but you can also just look at it and kinda gauge uh which one's closest to you. What you wanna actually do is snipe the closest lurker to you. So for example here. Kill it right there, right? So maybe you wanna spread it out a little bit more. But basically, you wanna have about three ghosts on one lurker, and the lurker will cancel one of the ghosts from shooting, but you need two snipes to kill a lurker. So then it becomes Two, two ghosts, or two snipes go off and you kill the lurker. So you end up killing the lurker that way, right? So, for example... Ah! I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so you can see it there is a little bit difficult. So you still want to, like, hold position as you snipe. So the shit... Like, your units don't walk forward when you do this. And then there. Kind of dies off. And then same thing here, right? Pause, hold position. Okay, so that's, that's what you want to do, right? Okay, and even then, it's a little bit tricky, but, you know, that's way better than you kind of just try to kill all the lurkers, and then they all shoot, and then you just kind of die, alright? So that, that's kind of the problem we have, right? So again, just kind of out-angle them, and go here, I don't have, I need the ravens, I can actually see them. And, voila, we just snipe. Okay, so now we'll, we'll change it to terrain here, and let's do, let's do a ramp. So here we are, and this is probably more so tends to be the case, right? Um, actually, if anything, let's go ahead and add, like, three tanks. Okay, let's say we're playing tanks. So, you know, some people play Widow Mines, but let's say for this scenario, we're playing tanks, right? Now, this might be a more uh, relatable scenario, right? So, let's say here are my control groups. I have my ghost separate, and then I have all this together here. Or I just have the tanks together. Like this. So, this random Raven Hellbat is here. My tanks are another hockey, my ghost another hockey. So, this allows me to... Focus fire my tanks, focus fire my bike, uh, my ghost, and not use this. If you only have two army hockeys, that's okay. You can, uh, you can just prioritize these two, right? Because your bio, if you have bio, it's going to be in the back either way. Because you can't really engage into this with bio, right? So now let's say... Oh, it's over here, right? So they can't push into you. But you maybe you can't really push into them. And so then here, what's really nice is... That because you have the defense, if you actually move in with a scan, let's say, and you snipe, you go, you actually move the ghost forward to snipe off, let's say, these, these clo closest lurkers here, right? If the Zerg player unburrows rapidly and tries to move in, then they eat the tank shots, and then you just move your ghost back, but now you have support from the tank. So this, this scenario, let me reset here, this scenario is really good. When they have, let's say, like, a bunch of Ling Bane. So, oh, uh, let's just build a bunch of Ling Bane. And then let's get their upgrades here. So let's get uh, speed. We'll get uh, Bane Ling speed. I don't know, just a Greenal Gland or some shit. Um, and, you know, let's say here we have... We have uh, two Metavacs and some Marine Marauders. Let's just, like, build a bunch of shit. And let's get uh, Dim Combat. Okay, cool. So now we have this scenario, same thing here, right? I got a couple of tanks, I have my ghost, right? And then for the sake of this video, let's just keep all my bio back here, right? So it's kind of the same. You want to have the bio back here with the tanks to support, but when you when they kind of go in for this here, right, and they burrow, you want to micro back here and then once they get hit by the tanks and they realize, oh shit, I can't really push into this, you know, they'll unburrow and get out, right? And as they're moving out, let's say, is when you want to go in and do the snipes, 
and that's how you pick them off as they run right but this is of course assuming that you have tanks you have missile turrets you have all this kind of stuff set up here um to be able to do that so now what i'm actually going to do is to give you guys a better idea is i'm going to show you some of these situations that uh, i encountered in ladder and also show you guys how to you do how to do this same thing but with widow mines so we're gonna flip to that right all right boys so we're back here now with our live in-game scenario uh this is actually a game i played on the korean ladder and um i have the units lost up here so you can actually see that for the most part during this game uh i've been trading better and this is actually the first time I'm, the lurkers are going to come out um i already have the ghost built i've already been on top of my scouting i already saw the lurkers being built here and i have i already had built the ghost academy and i have these three extra tech labs so that's how i'm able to get the ghost pretty quickly here um but here i'm playing against lurkers now right so this is kind of what's happening um and i'm dealing with this group and have this group here with the vipers coming out we have two more lookers on the way as well my opponent has a pretty good economy they have a hundred drones actually which is insane insane okay so i'm dealing with this here right got a small group here a bit fewer ghosts and this is i'm playing widow mines in this scenario and the thing with widow mines is it makes split pushing easier against lurkers because it's not as positional with the tanks right the downside is that you have to control two different groups of units so it's not it just may not be the most applicable play style, right? This is something that we see, like, Clem do. Uh, I don't think... Actually, I think Mara prefers to camp. But you might even see Gabe, for example. Gabe, for example, play uh, with the Widow Mines as well. And it, it, it's a bit tough, not gonna lie, because it can get really easy to get caught on uh, by the Lurkers. But here, I just get a good spread there. The, the scenarios we talked about earlier didn't really apply here because it was just the Lurkers only, and it had the Bio Plus to go, so I'm able to jump on it. But with Widow Mines, the cool thing is you can kind of lay some of these around in random places and be able to catch random run buys and things, right? Especially when your opponent is playing with the Ling Bane. Zergs will always... Zergs, when they see you playing with so many ghosts, will oftentimes try to play heavier on the Ling Bane side, actually, to make it harder for you to snipe the Lurkers because they're just you don't have enough to buffer the ghost for the ghost, right? Um, but that's the nice thing about the water mines. So here I'm actually split pushing this side, but I retreat to deal with this. And he also kind of does something similar. Um, I have most of my water mines here as well. But this is kind of, you know, like I mentioned earlier, they'll stand off here. And then when they realize they don't want to fight or can't fight, they'll unburrow and leave. That's where the ghosts come in. You land a good snipe there, you get a lurker and kind of go away. So here I have, I'll have set up, be setting up my water mines. Um, like I said, because... It's not tank style where you don't have to play as positional. I actually feel like it makes it a bit harder for them to bulldoze you because the mines, even if you don't micro them, can be very dangerous for them. So here I just run away. My opponent runs into the widow mines. I clean most of this stuff up. My ghosts live. And like I talked about earlier, there's only a handful of lookers here. So if I actually spend the time to control my units instead of doing this shit over here, I could actually scan and snipe some lurkers, right? And there's nothing to buffer. So this is what I'm talking about when I say like, you know, actually bad. Like I definitely could scan here, but, <laughs> but you guys can see, I, oh, I don't have scans, which is even worse actually. So you can see what I mean with the widow mines. That's the really cool thing about the mines. So if you're interested with the widow mines, something you could do. And in terms of my control, I have two control groups right now with my two different sets of units. This is my main army hockey or control group, which is number four. And this is my other control group, which is number one, my secondary control group. Okay. Um, I don't actually have the ghosts separated, so unfortunately it makes my control a bit more difficult because then I have to have the ghost like I have to like double click the ghost to move them forward, or sometimes my bio will run in. So this is the only downside of split pushing, I think, is it's just really hard. You can't have like four separate army control groups um to have like all these individual ghosts spread out. And most people most people don't. Like uh, I'll tell you right now, like Mario uses two army hotkeys with like a third drop key, so it's like not exactly, you know, even Mario himself is not is not splitting up like five different army control groups. But you can see there, no buffer means I can land the snipes, which is really good for us. And my opponent will go back down here. And again, I get a little bit stuck here. I don't have any widow mines, as you can see. They're farther back here. And so I got caught there. I got a little bit stuck. But you can see it punishes them for chasing you. Which, if you're comfortable with that, it can actually be really good. Um, But like I said, I know it's really scary sometimes. You step too far into creep, you gotta burrow the mines rapidly, and you kinda just like, oh shit, like, 
um, I'm too far in, I'm too far deep, and you kind of just die. So that's the only downside about this. You really have to be careful about going on to creep. Um, I do have a lot more Marauders and Marines. This is, again, so that I can buffer a lot. The Banes, the Lurkers. Um, it just covers for my Ghost. There, and land some Snipes. And um, so this is kind of how to do things. You can see here, I'm actually getting uh, split pushed by the Lurkers, right? So this could be something that I'm being punished for. I have no tanks here, I have no Liberators here. I have just this planetary. Um, but I'm able to keep my opponent back here, waiting for more army, because I'm consistently trading due to the Widow Mines. And, like, I'm not even microing them. I'm not microing the mines. Like, the mines are just landing shots. And, you know, sometimes it's true. Like, sometimes they'll, they'll do some friendly fire damage. But for the most part, my opponents are just kind of, like, bulldozing into me. I burrow the mines, get off creep. Mines detonate. When they leave, I chase them. And I land the, the shots. So, same thing here. For example, I need to be careful because I have no ghost. Okay, I actually start two liberators. And you can see I rally them here. Because I need to deal with this. So Liberators can also be really, really helpful in this scenario. You don't have to only build Ghosts. You can definitely build the Liberators as well. Um, just sieging. If you're sieging some, uh, Zergen General or if you are gonna, if you need him defensively, totally okay. You can add those as well. Um, he's actually in range of my PF here, which is very nice. I, I think I have the range upgrade. I do have the range upgrade. So uh, guys, you should get that upgrade. It's for real. Helps a ton. Um, here, that actually rewind. You can see I'm being punished because I have no Widow Mines. So this is my fault here. And it goes to show the importance of, the importance of having those those splash damage units available. Because here I've over I've overextended. These widow mines are running up here, but I only have three. Low energy. Some of these don't detonate. So th you can see here, this is the downside of the widow mines. Sometimes, um, is that sometimes they don't land the shots. But you know what? If that was like three tanks, I would have lost three tanks worth of splash damage, which is way more value than the widow mines themselves. So. That's what I like about playing with, with Widow Mines. Here again, like I have random mines out on the map. So I see, for example, here on top of the sensor tower, I have a mine that can actually listen and see the HP of this rock. And I know that my opponent is here. I start up more ghosts, start up more liberators, right? And I chase forward with the marauders, always, if you can. And here, now that I've had some breathing room, my opponent is not attacking into me anymore. He's retreated. It's time for me to do some sort of eco damage after killing this base. So it, it doesn't just end here where now I play defensively. I need to be able to maintain some sort of map presence. So for the meantime here, I feel comfortable sending these two medevacs out. So I'll do that. I also rallied these two libs here. The cool thing about the liberators is you don't have to pay attention to them. But this is how I find my ways of doing damage across the map while still being able to defend against the lurkers. Um, I know it's a lot to control, like I said. So if you just want to use the Liberators instead of the drops, totally cool. Go ahead and do that. Like I said, Liberators, Siege them. Siege them. Don't worry about them. Um, it's a bit of a meme now with that. But you know what? It helps you a lot, right? This is a little bit too far forward, but can be helpful. And you can see here, when I start adding this multitasking, I'm obviously very broke. I'm trying to get another base set up. My opponent has way more workers than I do as well. And even though I've been trading better, it's still a money game. So I still need to continue taking bases. I still need to continue to trade better. But I also need to do damage to my opponent's economy, which is why I have these liberators here and I have these, this bio here. But what I was trying to say earlier is that now he's retreating and not attacking into me, which makes me feel comfortable, more comfortable to take this space. I'm kind of maneuvering around. No, I, I've unburrowed these or unseaged these. Um, this is a bit of F2 on my part, but kind of, you know, now I'm adding a nuke. You don't have to add the nuke. Um, but this is how I do my damage, right? This is how I'm able to, to keep them back home. And now he's decided I had enough, so I'm going to go ahead and push into you. Um, and actually, my army is very split up here. I have some units here. I have some units here. I have some units here. Uh, Ghost-wise, I have four ghosts only. And one of them is New King. So it's actually a bit of a pickle for me. But thankfully, here, we're, he's still morphing in only six lurkers. So these little mines here are going to carry me. Add some nice little shots, right? Already, already, already very nice. Buys me some time to rebuild some army here. Evacuate this base. And like I said, I pull up up I pull up this ramp with the my marauders forward. Here there's no lurkers, so I snipe the overseers, which is still very nice sometimes because it'll supply block them. So I do that. And then kill these changelings. And again here, same scenario, right? With the lurkers. So you know what? I would say even if you can, if you can remember, just put some liberators here. Put a wood of mine out here. Um Try to defend those so you don't have to do this, which is 
split up your army to deal with this while also dealing with this because i know that, that that's the difficult part of this style is being able to defend on multiple fronts and it's not exactly um something that is super achievable for people um who are not super fast or anything like that so uh, but like i said the building armor and the range helps a ton so please guys like you should definitely need to get the upgrade after 3-3 you can see i'm literally killing liquors to the planetary um while I'm dealing with this and you can see here let me show you guys what happens here so and maybe i'll tap into my vision here i'm defending here i'm defending that i'm keep scanning right because i need to see where my opponent's army is i send only a couple units forward but i try i don't go too far into creep here my opponent pushes into me the first thing i do is run away i don't even split i run away have my minds detonate get off creep and you can see my opponent runs away now what would have been nice here is going forward, maybe sniping a Viper, sniping some Overseers. Um, but I'm also trying to deal with this. So you can see how that kind of helps me. And who knows, maybe what are mines are just better to play, even. So, you know, before it was a turtle style thing, but maybe mines maybe mines will help a lot here. Now I'm split pushing again. Like I said, you don't have to do this if you don't if you split pushing is too difficult because it involves too much multitask. Just put the armies together. And try to attack, for example, the newest base. And if that if that is the case, what I would actually do as well is I would concentrate my defense on my newer bases. So here and here. So for example, leaving liberators, leaving mines there, if I have some. And then the rest of this, the rest is bio and ghost, I would push this way and try to hit these newer bases, or maybe do some widow mines or something like that. Um and that, that's what I would do to, if I still want to play this style, but don't wanna have to rely on the multi push and then here you can see he retreats i'm targeting the closest lurkers he runs he runs into me but the mines are here and my reinforcing bio is off creep and now my army lives again same thing i can now snipe these sometimes even as well you land one snipe it's already really dead so you just have one marauder go forward and you kill it off and because here i feel like i'm winning now i i now can join this army here with this army here and I'm able to push. Or, I don't know, fuck off and do something else that apparently was, was more important. But, you know, like I said here, micring off creep. Notice I love taking engagements on ramps, above ramps. Please, guys, if you can, those are the ideal positions to take these fights. But, yeah, I've just traded better. The quantity decay resource is different. My opponent has just run out of money despite having so many workers. You know, this space is oversaturated. This space is a bit saturated as well. I'm super oversaturated here and just, you know, I, my opponent was even faster than me actually. Um, or maybe that's inflated, but you can see how much like these random widow mines, these li sieging these liberators, um, can help. But honestly, man, I really think the widow mines just carried me here. Um, you know, sniping some units helped, but I feel like I didn't really split crazy. I feel like I didn't, um, maybe defending on two fronts was probably something that helped me a lot or was something that helped me a lot. But yeah, like for the most part, it feels like it was just making sure that I, I didn't get stuck and then have my minds defend and take care of everything so um yeah and you know what this is like basically my new updated lurker video so like one of the first videos i put out um but if you guys are interested in playing mines um hopefully you like this video um and yeah i'm gonna do another video like this with uh, how to use ghost against protoss um as something has been requested of me but um yeah so hope you guys enjoyed that video and i'll see you guys in the next one later